So I kind of was thinking, what if they made like a Whopper Plopper 60? So I started coming up with the idea of doing my own lure and making my own thing. So I'm gonna take you through how I made it, how it works, and I'm gonna show you the first fish I caught on it. So it's pretty cool. Hang with me and check it out. It might be something you wanna do. Most importantly, it fits in this box. See, this is my ultralight box. When I go ultralight fishing, I just wanna carry one little box. And this doesn't fit in the box. And I'm working on a version two of the same lure, and I have a couple other ideas as well. So I'm gonna fiddle around with some lure making. I'm not a good lure maker. That handmade lure guy on YouTube, he's like the bomb. I'm not even in the league. It sits straighter in the water than the Whopper Plopper. Look at that, guys. My first fish on my new lure. Decent one, too. All right. It works. There you go. Proof positive, guys. This works. Not a real big one, but I'll take it. My original idea when I ordered the parts, I was going to shave them down and change them quite a bit. But once they arrived and they were so small, I decided to keep them more or less the same and mock up the first lure just to see how it worked. So I ordered some line through wire, some bodies, a little spinner tail, some ball bearings, split rings. I received some new tools, cutters, and loop makers, and a saw, and of course the drill bits five minute epoxy, some hooks, and got started on my design. I pushed the line through through the body of the lure and then I drilled through the bottom of the lure and I wanted to intersect the two holes. What I wanted was a continuous strong connection from the original connection point at the front of the lure to the hook in the bottom of the lure and the hook in the back. Once I figured that out, I carved out some eyes. I estimated the length of the loop for my bottom hook, and I got things ready to start gluing together. I mixed up five minute epoxy. I usually mix the epoxy for about a minute. Started dropping the epoxy down into the hole. The hole for the bottom hook was oversized, of course, because I had to push the loop up through the body. On the back of the lure, I was concerned about the wire after moving around, cutting the balsa wood, so I put a little ferrule or like a rivet at the end so it would protect. Once it was glued up, I painted and epoxied it really quickly. I rushed the job just so I could get a mock-up in the water, and then I assembled everything to see how it would go together and how it would work. One thing I learned how to do, which was to create a loop for a hook, you might want to watch a video on YouTube for this one because it's a little tricky, not hard, but just, you know, a little thinking has to go into it. These round-nosed pliers are imperative for this type of operation, so you're gonna need that plier. Once everything is together, uh, you twist down the uh, loops on the shaft and you kind of create the spacing you want for the spinner blade. You don't want it too tight, you want to leave it free so the spinner blade can move freely and you want a little bit of shake and rattle in there. Now this was a little bit of a tough deal. I didn't have a split ring pliers, uh, so I just used regular pliers and probably poked my fingers five or six times trying to get these hooks on this lure. I sped it up because it was painfully slow to watch. Once I was finished, I was pretty happy with the way the lure looked. 
you can see the weights on the nose of the lure that I just pushed into a hole and epoxied over. But all in all, I was pretty pleased with the first run of this lure. I just wanted to share some final thoughts on the lure. I've caught a couple of fish on this, this thing. Uh, it works okay. A couple of complaints that I don't like about it is it's way too light. You do want something that you can cast. And let me show you an example of something that casts really well and is still really small and light. And this is the Pop R50. And this thing has BBs in it and it will cast really far on an ultralight. And this thing, these lures crush the fish. I don't know what it is about them. I don't know, I have to take into consideration the fact that it's fall, the water is colder, so the fish may not be moving uh, like they were in the summer, chasing baits, going after the buzz baits. So right now the poppers are really killing it. A couple of uh, physical complaints. Yeah, if you look at the way that this back part and this hook are, imagine if you're fishing, you come up and grab it, could actually free your mouth of being hooked on that hook. Um, it's so buoyant that it sits really high in the water. I'm not sure if that looks natural. And I'm not gonna waste a lot of time on this. Hey, who's kidding who? I'm not a great lure maker. You know, I just ordered two torpedo teenies which are really small ultralights and they have little blades on the back to spin, which does exactly what this does. It's a good first attempt. I had fun making it. Uh, I'm gonna tweak it and play with a couple different versions and who knows, I might land on something that I would actually use. My number one complaint about this lure, it looks like a dart. It's nose heavy. So when I cast it, this thing turns. You can actually hear it going in the wind. When you cast it, it turns with your line the line gets tangled up back here. That's something I wouldn't have even thought about when I was making this lure. You learn a lot. You actually learn to appreciate how complex something that seems so simple is. And it's really fun to make something that catches a fish. That's kind of neat. I'm not gonna be a lure maker by any means. And what I think I might end up doing rather than building stuff from scratch is I'll probably take lures and tweak them. So there's things that you can do, I think, to some of these other lures that instead of creating a new lure, you just modify your own. So anyway, um, it was a good first attempt. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will be putting some more stuff up soon. Thanks. Hey, just a parting thought. It fits in the box. Yeah, it fits in the box. That was a design goal. Design goal, Matt.